a Gmail that I'd like to delete for some, I don't know why I have it. I, I probably had to create it for some other reason. Um, yeah, I think you can delete a Gmail. Um, I'm pretty sure you can too. Yeah. Yeah, under account. So just, just erase it so it's no longer in existence. Yeah. Okay. That's what I'd like to do. I can send you those links. Do you guys all want those links or do you want me to just send them to Marty? No, send them all. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> you know what? I have a. We can then choose to delete them if we don't want them. <laughs> it's good to. Uh, what I've done with all the information is I've, in case I need it in the future, I'm just putting it in a folder. Yeah, because um, and this <laughs> I'm not technical, so it's well, printed well, out and put in a paper folder. <laughs> How ironic is that? And some email address just die in existence entirely. They um, like the company goes out of business, so they no longer exist. Like Earthlink emails were really popular. In the yeah, right. These early 2000s, they no longer exist. So those emails are gone. Um, and like my college email stopped working after five years after I graduated college. So there are things like that that, you know, because of history just die. Yeah. Well, thank you for sending me that uh, information on that because I think I'll just erase those. Sounds good. Thank you. Yep. Um, Lynn, uh, I have a question. Uh, you mentioned that you use different browsers depending on what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. uh, do you upload or download on your uh, home screen uh, the different browsers and click on whichever you want? Um, is there a charge for each browser brought up to your screen? And can you give us a list of recommended browsers? <laughs> Good questions. Um, so the the go to ones, all of them are free, thankfully, uh, which has changed over the last 30 years. So thank you time. Um, but um, what's it called? Um, Chrome is a good one. It's uh, from Google. Uh, there's more security issues when it comes to Chrome. But if you're a Gmail user, it all speaks together and they all live in their little happy bubble. So um, it, it's helpful if you are a Gmail user or have your Google Calendar in there because they all work harmoniously together. Um, but um, security is one of the downsides to that browser. Um, Internet Explorer is dying. They are replacing that with uh, Edge and they're releasing a new version of Edge that is coming out. You might have already got a request to update your Edge. Um, it's safe to do that. And it's uh, got a lot more security features and things like that. I really didn't like Internet Explorer, um, but I don't know enough about this new one, but it, I hear it's better. Um, Mozilla Firefox is another one um, that's good. Um, and uh, Safari is uh, a Mac-based sub-browser that if you don't have a PC, you can't download. Um, same goes for Internet Explorer Edge. If you have a Mac, you can't download that uh, because it's a Microsoft-owned browser. But those are the biggest uh, four or five that are popular. Um, so I have all of those depending on my computer's operating system. So you don't you download them into your computer and then you click on them anytime you want to look for a particular thing. Mm -hmm. I'll save them in that taskbar at the bottom of the screen where the, like the start button is. Okay. It's called Dock on a Mac. It's a taskbar on a PC mm -hmm. um, or on the desktop. You know, have one of each. Um, okay. Okay. Great. Right. Thank five. you. Yeah. You, you have all five. Um, I think four on each computer. So I have a Mac and I have Macs at home and I have a PC at Westminster. 
So the PC at Westminster has an Internet Explorer Edge. The Macs have Safari because they you can't download the others on those right. operating systems. I, I think I have two only two. I feel so inadequate. That's okay. <laughs> It doesn't hurt, but there's sometimes a, um, a website that won't work. And uh, the first thing you should do is check another browser because it might, for whatever reason, not be working that day with that browser. So if you, for example, uh, saw our website went down on Sunday during uh, the live stream, of course, yeah. it's be a Sunday morning, right? Um, <laughs> the first thing I did was check all the browsers to see if it was happening across all of them or if it was just one um because Everyone. sometimes that will whatever reason it will work government uh software um like programs if you're applying for unemployment or um medicare or any of those government things uh, internet explorer and edge are their preferred ones um, to do all of their stuff on because their, their uh, software is all old. Um, so it's <laughs> built in that format, which is sad. You would hope the government would have the new stuff, but. Uh, well, how would, I mean, I don't, how would you know that if you were gonna fill out a government form? Cause I uh, recently yeah. uh, did one for this new driver's license that we have to do. Yeah. And, um, had a little difficulty with that and I wasn't on Internet Explorer. Mm -hmm. So you, you, you just just do the best you can, but you would not necessarily have that information to work with government forms. The only reason I know that is because back when I first graduated college, um, I became a government contractor for um, Harrisburg's film um thing they had a like a little tv studio in the harrisburg um offices and did some stuff so once there was one time i went in and helped them and i had to become a contractor for the government for them to pay me the only way i could get through those forms was on a pc at my church's computer at my church's um building because none of my family's computers had the right um, version of Internet Explorer to fill out that form. This was 10 plus years ago, but um, you know, it's- um, That makes me wonder about some of these forms I'm having to fill out online, like from um, Penn Medicine, let's say, and I can't remember if it was Penn Medicine or another big medical conglomerate, but um, I could not, you know, there'll be a form they want you to fill out before you come in, but especially now with um, yeah. COVID. COVID, I'm like, you got to fill out all this stuff, like, you know, it's amazing. Um, but my, I could not um, get in, get into their forms to, you know, check the blocks or anything. And it, it might have been for that reason, mm -hmm. you know, when you call tech support for those companies that say, I'm having trouble filling out whatever, they will they might say, what browser are you using? And they might suggest using another one. Um, but you could Google, but th my first reaction is whenever it, I refresh, it doesn't submit the first time, I just try another browser to see if it works better <laughs> before I panic. <laughs> Lynn, how does Edge differ from Internet Explorer and how does, say, Chrome differ, Google Chrome differ from the two of those? Um, Internet Explorer is uh, the original browser that Microsoft released it on Windows 1995. So that first, um, you know, home user standard. That's almost, that's almost Old Testament times when it comes I to. Know. <laughs> I know, I know, 25 years, half a, half a century, or a quarter of a century. <laughs> I do math today. <laughs> um, but um, 
so that um, over the course of 25 years, um, they've added some, you know, um, updates and things, but they um, never really redesigned and added all the back end stuff to make it better. So this new one that's being released, that's like green and blue E. Uh, yeah. That one is uh, making it more uh, robust and um, actually standardizes the browsers that were created in the last 10 years. Um, Mozilla Firefox was probably created maybe 98 to 2000. I'd have to look at dates. I'm just guessing here. Chrome, I think, was created in 2005, 2008 era. Um, so Safari's the same um, format at, with Microsoft Internet Explorer. It was the default browser uh, on Mac. Uh, back in the 90s, they originally used uh, Netgear, ne Netscape, or whatever that. Netscape, yeah. Yeah, whatever that mm -hmm. one was. That was before my time. Um, <laughs> but, um, and then Safari rolled out, I think, in the 90s, early 2000s. Um, you so, had to pick one. What? You only have one. If you had to pick one, is your favorite. what's your favorite? I would say I do most of my stuff in Chrome because it's convenient, which isn't a great answer, but it's the truest because I'm lazy. <laughs> Is Chrome for Mac? No, it's for both. Google. Oh, for both. It, it's created by Google. The, okay. the challenge with Chrome is some of the security isn't as up to par as uh, Mozilla Firefox, uh, Safari, or this new version of Edge, um, according to the Edge's ads, and how can we trust ads, you know? <laughs> I haven't done enough research from actual tech experts, but, um, but um, what's it called? But Chrome um, does, um, like, since I have a Gmail and I do a lot of stuff in Google Drive uh, where I create a lot of documents and things, it all works collectively in that um, umbrella. So it, it harmonizes in a way that it makes my life a lot easier. I don't want to take the extra hour to like maneuver through all of this other extra stuff in another browser. Um, so it saves me time. Um, but what for your purposes, you're, you're probably not doing what I'm doing on a daily basis. <laughs> God help me. <laughs> Are you talking about what kind of the, what kind of security issues does it have? Is it because it it um, populates everything you every form you ever do, or is that part of the problem? Or well, they have rolled out security and privacy stuff. Um, and you can turn things on and off. Uh, one of the things that we don't know for sure, if you, you notice those, um, when you're searching the internet, you search for um, paper towels, and then you, know, you go on another website and there's a, a coupon or advertisement for paper towels, or you just bought your grandson a, you know. Scooter. Kid, yeah, scooter. And then you just see ads for scooters. Yeah. Um, so Chrome collects that data and sells it to their advertisers on, um, on, on their browser. So all those ads you see on when you search in Google, that's how they're collecting that information. Uh, they're taking that information from your browser and sending it out. Um, Mozilla and uh, Safari and Edge claim that they have better um, protection against that. Do we know for sure? No, because you don't know what these companies are doing. Uh, yeah. About the ads, if those ads pop up and you just ignore them, you don't try to close them, you don't click on them, can they still be 
getting into your computer? Just the fact that they displayed? Okay. Uh, you have to click on them okay. uh, to really do any, unless they, you're on some really sketchy dark web porn site <laughs> doing some naughty things on the internet, uh, you should be fine. Um, some of those sketchy websites uh, just are built with nasty malware. Um, but I'm thinking for what you're doing, you're fine. <laughs> Well, I have seen, not recently, but I have seen, and I don't know what browser is using, pop-ups that you couldn't just close out, you couldn't do anything. You had to click wherever they wanted you to click to get on. And I would just close out my, my computer. I would just, you know, because you couldn't get it off your screen without doing something. It wouldn't just disappear if you clicked on something around it. I haven't seen that lately, so maybe that got fixed. I and actually, thought, that, that happened to me too. I, I just, and when I can't get out of it, I just turn it off. I, I'm not going to click it if, if they're demanding that I do it. Yeah. It sounds like those things are adware, which is a form of malware that gets downloaded. On, is it the same ad over and over again that mm -hmm. you see, or is it a different one? Because um, sometimes you can accidentally download malware and a form of malware is called adware. And it's those nasty pop-ups that flash and, you know, threaten you with some annoying message, making noise and you can't escape and it's malware and you have to remove it, clean your computer. And you know, um, I've got that on my phone. I'll go to, a, I'll Google something, let's <laughs> say like today. I googled daisies <laughs> and uh, wanting to know how to prune my daisies. Anyway, um, as I as I'm going down, um, trying to go through, you know, I, I hit one of the um, websites. The, the websites, and as I'm scrolling through it, all these ads pop up, and and I can't, I can hardly read the information because it, it um, the information uh, slips around and the ads pop up and, and it's, what is that? Those are just annoying ads on those websites. Because, oh, okay. Uh, those websites are fr free for you, but they need to make money. So what they do is they sell space They're on very the annoying. They're very annoying. <laughs> The thing you can do about that is add an ad blocker, but doing that on your phone is a lot harder um, because um, I think you have to really add an app ad blocker, which I haven't looked into enough. That's why I don't do a whole lot of browser searching on my um, phone. Um, I go to Google's, the Google app and go through it that way, um, which is a little bit better, not great, but a little um but ad blockers will block the majority of those a couple will still slip through um but um they'll block the majority of those annoying ads that you see um there are extensions you can add to whatever browser you use um and you it might put like a gray image around the box um, it might not just remove it entirely, but it won't be in your face. Um, Thank you. So, so when I like, for example, I um, if I want to have a recipe or any other information, I go into Google. Mm -hmm. When I go into Google and I type whatever recipe for chicken pot pie or something, uh, I'm, I'm, I am using then the Google Chrome when I do that because I don't like Chrome, but I like the just the, that E, the Google, the Google thing. Yeah, Chrome is the browser. It's a little red, green, yellow dot. That's yeah, Chrome. yeah, and, and I don't use that. I just go yeah. into Google. So Google <laughs> is a website, and Google website is separate from the browser. They're okay. both owned by the same person, uh, the Google company, um, but Google the website is safe on any browser. Right, and I, it lets me browse oh, yeah. and, and print a recipe and everything, so I guess it's okay. Yep. 
at, but I can do the same thing. Like if I go in Safari, for example, and look for a recipe. Yeah, you can go to Google.com and you know right. find it in there. There are different okay. search engines you could search too if uh, you want to. But so, Lynn, yes, I think I think you just answered a question that I had. I I live on an iPad, and obviously Safari is you, you yeah. click on Safari to get to the web. But my web page, it comes up, is always Google. So that's the really Google.com. It's not Google, the search engine. Is that right? Because I'm using Safari? Google.com is a URL, uh, but Google.com is a search engine. So Google, the website, is something called a search engine. But, but when I click on Safari and want a new page to look mm -hmm. at something, it's always Google. So. I have set that as a search engine. It, it's probably a default. Yeah. Okay. Uh, which it, it is funny to me that Safari would advertise in other companies as their Well, own. I've never, I don't think I've ever looked up anything on Safari, Safari.com. Yes, I, I'm not, I don't know what is Safari.com. I, I don't know what Safari, <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Safari is a browser. Um, yeah. But um, anyway. Um, yeah, safari.com is about African safaris. It's not the browser. So, so safari, is, <laughs> safari is a browser, but it's not a search engine. Yes. Okay. Um, Apple does not have its own search engine. Right. Search engines um, are yahoo.com. They've got right. the search bar in it. Bing.com. Um, one that's not around, but is the one I learned on was askjeeves.com. Um, oh, yeah. Maybe some of you I remember that. <laughs> that, and it was painful. You had to add parentheses and hyphens. Oh, it was God. painful. Um, so DuckDuckGo is another one. Uh, they're supposed to be a little bit um, less ad-driven than Google. Um, right. So those are the, um, those are the players still. Yeah. Uh, Bing, Yahoo, um, DuckDuckGo, and Google. Yeah, my daughter-in-law uses DuckDuckGo. She says it's safer. Yeah. It, it's one of those, <laughs> <laughs> everything else in Google, but it's like Amazon Smile. I always try to do everything through Amazon Smile, but do, sometimes I accidentally don't. Do you guys know what Amazon Smile is? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, I no. finally, I finally changed from supporting the uh, homeless sh family shelters in California at our old church to this one. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, for those of you who don't know, smile.amazon.com is an Amazon um, company, or it's it's still Amazon. But anytime you buy something there, your uh, money that you spent will go support a nonprofit that you can select. So uh, Connie was saying, you know, she had yeah. just changed her nonprofit. Yeah, so uh, I so have my promise now. Yeah, so you can change it to whatever nonprofit you would like. And that way you're supporting a nonprofit through Amazon, all your Amazon purchases. So even though Amazon's not a great company, um, you're still supporting others. <laughs> you're doing something good. <laughs> you're doing a little bit something good, even though five percent good. <laughs> it, it's it's your little just white justification. Uh, Lynn. Yes. What did you say? The Yahoo and the DuckDuckGo, and what was the other one? Bing. B i n g. And what are they? Search engines. Ah, thank you. But are you saying duck, duck, like quack, quack? Oh, I've never yes. heard of that one. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it, I can pull it up the website. It looks like um, it, it has a um, duck on it. It's really cute. <laughs> I think so anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's this little duck, duck. <laughs> and you can just search, you know, whatever. Love it. It's a little bit cuter. That counts. All right. There you are. There's cool. a roll. Thank you. Nope. Oh, yeah. 
So I, I like its logo. Mm, cute. <laughs> I've been uh, here's a, for a, here's a dumb time. question. Uh, <laughs> what is the, what's the difference between upload and download? <laughs> Good question. So, so uploading is taking a file from your computer and sending it up to the cloud. So when I upload, so I'll take the video, video recordings we do here. I'll save the video file recording on my computer, but then I upload it to YouTube so that others can see it. So it's sending anything from your physical hardware device up to the internet or cloud. Does that make sense? Yes. And then download is anything okay. you take anything from the internet and download it onto your computer. So it goes from the internet down. So if you picture the cloud, and the internet up above you. <laughs> you can think of it as this up and down, raining, mm -hmm. evaporation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> um, so Thank download you. is usually you see the file like coming and downloading into your downloads or on your desktop. And then you're like, oh, it's done. So when you do speed checks or tests on your internet, it will tell you the speed you have of your internet going up to the internet and the speed going down to your internet. So it tells you both of those uh, if you ever do a speed test for Verizon or Comcast. Okay, great. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Maybe that was more information than you wanted. <laughs> no, it's great. It's good. Thank you. Yeah. Now I have my dumb question. Oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> no dumb questions. <laughs> yeah, this is a dumb one, probably. What's the difference between a browser and a search engine? Good question. Yeah. So, great question. So a browser is an application or, you know, software that's installed on your computer. You, you download these browsers from the internet to your computer. Um, so they're stored on your um computer. A search engine is your way of searching data across the internet. So back before search engines existed, you really couldn't, unless you knew the URL or the website you wanted to go to, you had to physically type it in. There was no way of finding information. So um, search engines then became a thing where you go, I'm looking for something uh, related to cars uh, and specifically um, Honda cars and then you would search that and it would give you all those files and now search engines have become so smart that they like give you word definitions and like top results and all kinds of things um, and they've changed it from like finding exact words to like phrases um, which are really cool does that Makes sense. But what the what is the browser doing on your computer? So the only purpose of the browser is to get you from your computer to the internet. It's your way of connecting to the internet. Does that make sense? Okay. Like, yeah. Like Word is your word processing power, where you type up um, okay. papers or whatever. PowerPoint is your application to create PowerPoints. Um, uh, your calendar app is where you keep your calendar or your e Outlook is where you see all your emails, but the browser's how you access the internet. So your, your browser is your internet explorer, your Google? Chrome. Or Chrome. And sorry. Then what's the search engine? Search engine is Google, Bing, Yahoo, Duck, um, duck, duck Go. Duck, duck, go. <laughs> the cute little duck. You're going to switch to that just to say the name, right? It's. <laughs> Thank you. It, does that help? I hope mm. I'm explaining this well. Yes, yes. Great. Yes. 
Well, uh, I have a really, really, really dumb question now. <laughs> this, is the, this is the dumbest. This is the dumbest. Um, so when I open up, let's say Chrome, and I um, there's a little slit across the top, and I type in um, again. Let's just say daisies. Okay, <laughs> can't get off that subject. Daisies, uh, and then. Um, how to prune daisies and then all this stuff pops up did a search engine go to did us did it pop into a search engine that went to find out about daisies is that i mean it went from chrome to a search engine to all the daisies yes <laughs> well done marty and of course to marty <laughs> Well, what did, what, what, what did it, uh, how that happen? Did it go to, is it, did it go to Google? Is that how that happened? It went from Chrome to Google to daisies? So because you're using Chrome, Google knows that you, one of the benefits of having Chrome is it's built by Google. So it all speaks the same language. So when you search in that URL slot where you would type in westminsterpc.org or google.com, it goes, we're going to let you use this as a search engine too. So you can either use it as a type in your domain name or you can use it as Google because we know you want to do both and we want to make your life easier so you don't have to go to google.com. Oh, okay. So if I, if I had opened up Safari, cause I have Safari also. Yeah. So if I had opened up Safari and typed in something there, it, what would that, that wouldn't have been Google. That would have been, um, that would have been another search engine. So because Chrome came in existence and had this feature, all the other browsers had to catch up and be like, Google is smarter than us. We need to compete. So they very quickly <laughs> added that feature to their browsers. So, so that's the Google too. The, the so, um, Safari goes to Google, goes to Daisies. So I'd have to check what the default Safari is. Each of them um, are send you to a search engine. Not necessarily all of them are Google. Okay. I know Internet Explorer uh, will do either Yahoo or Bing because they have a um, agreement with Bing or Yahoo. I forget who they use now, but they are partners or, you know, they've done a contract. They're making money with each other. So you do that. You can change it. You can go in your settings and change um, what your default browser or, or what your default search engine is. So across all of my uh, browsers, I've defaulted it to uh, Google. You could default it to Bing if you really like Bing, or you could default it to DuckDuckGo, or you can default it to Yahoo, or if Ask Jeeves really still exists. Actually, I think it's Ask.com now. If Ask.com ask is your preferred way of doing it, which I highly don't recommend, um, you could do that too. So Thank you. Um, Lynn, I found um, when I was using, well, Internet Explorer, but then Edge, and I knew the URL, and I would start to, to type it in in the address um, part, not in the search engine part, it would immediately send me to Bing, and that was so confusing, or so frustrating to me, but was it because Bing would get a, a because they get a click through, they get a, a payback or something for that? Is that why that was happening? Yeah, they had an agreement with Bing that they, you know, yeah, so, I don't know what their agreement is, but they're definitely, you know, friends or, you know, doing stuff with each other. So, um, so when I, when I, you know, spend time with people on their computers, I'll sometimes be like, please change your search engine because you're using this old one that's not great. Um, I think, Dan, I think I switched you to Google. I don't think you're with Bing anymore. I could be wrong, but um, if you're wondering why it's sending you to Bing or whatever, that's probably why. Man. Yes. What does URL mean? Um, what is the official? <laughs> uh, the official is worldwide. Um, Universal. Yes. Something. 
Okay. Uniform resource locator is That's another right. name for a web address. URLs are made of letters, numbers, and other symbols in a standard form. People use them on computers to make computers fetch and show specific resources, usually a web page from another computer web server on the internet. So uniformed resource locator. Oh, it's uniform. Yeah. Um, it's a address of the World Wide Web page. So it's basically a website. It's an it's a it's another term for website. Thank you. I use them interchangeably. Uh, um, and um, I tend not to use www anymore. Um, dot whatever. Uh, you don't need to type in the www anymore. The browsers are smarter than you. They <laughs> know you want to put that. <laughs> they know that you want the HTTPS and they know you want the www. So thank you. Save yourself five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Lynn, uh, you have sent us some uh, really nice recaps with uh, wonderful links yeah. for different things. Uh, how uh, is there a way, a simple way that I can save those recaps, like uh, whatever, drag them into something or another to keep them handy? So you can create folders in your email. So depending on your email provider, um, You'll see on the left hand side of usually it's the left hand side of your um, inbox. Uh, it will say inbox sent uh, junk. Crack. Okay. Yeah. And if you click under inbox or right click inbox, you can hit add fo folder. So if you see my email, I have like 500 folders. Um, <laughs> I've got, you know, like our church's emails that we send out and I've got, you know, live streaming stuff and I've got a bills folder and I've got a promos folder, you know, um, so, so I go to inbox, uh, right click there, add folder, add folder and then drag it there save it as, you know, Lynn's recaps or whatever you want to save it as. Okay. And mm -hmm. then. Can you're, a one, you're a one person stimulus package. <laughs> uh, Dan, you're a riot. <laughs> but he's right. Um, so then I put, then I drag it there. You can either drag it or at the top where it's like reply forward there should be a move button too. So you could either drag it or move oh. to the folder. Okay, um, thank you. So well, you that brings up the question, how do you- got to create the folder first. Yes. Okay. You can actually, uh, if, you do the, if you do the move icon under the email, there should be a create folder icon and you can type in a name and save it that way. Um, but depending on how, which email provider you use and if you use outlook or the the url or website um it depends on how it's done and, and i have a couple of uh, folders i'd like to remove i've been on committees i'm no longer on that committee and i want to remove that committee's uh folder you so have, i've tried to but i oh I have that problem too. I do too. I, it's easy to add, but I, I tried and tried to clean it up and I, I don't see how to remove it. What are your, um, what are, what um, are your email providers? Comcast. Or um, Gmail. AOL. Comcast. <laughs> all over the place. Yeah. In Yahoo, we have to first delete everything in that folder. That's me. Oh. Sorry, I have to get up. I have to get up and get my steps. And... I we're muting you, Connie. We're muting your old one. Now I have to. Uh, I muted the wrong one. Sorry, Connie. Um. 
maybe you'll come back. Yeah, I try um, deleting all of them. All of, you might be able to like open the folder, uh, select all, and then delete, and then try deleting the folder. I know Google, it says remove label. Um, I don't have a Comcast to test. And, um, but there should be a way to do it. I'll try to find some links and send them out um, for different providers. Thank but you. It, it should be done. But congratulations for getting out those communities because I know that's hard to do. <laughs> you different different subject. You're doing something with Chautauqua. Yes. Have you, have you been there? I go every year with my family. This is the first year I haven't gone in like twenty five years. You know, I grew up. I grew up in Jamestown. You know. Oh, cool. So, very I'm nice. Familiar. Tech time with Lynn George. <laughs> it's, a, it's a fun little town. Pardon? It's a fun. But now it's, it's got the Lucy Lucille comedy thing. Mm -hmm. um, there hasn't been a lot happening there. But did you sail and fish and everything on Lake Chautauqua then growing up? Look at me. <laughs> I'm more of an anchor than I am a sailor. So, uh, no, well, I fished and that sort of thing, yes. Uh, it's a nice lake. They, they've done a lot with the lake and so on. And, uh, mm -hmm. But Chautauqua was, um, you're excessively cultured. Yes. I, was as, I, was, I was not as, well, I have friends that, uh, yeah, we used to do stuff. We used to go there, but that's um, what kind of. I won't go go to a month, but what kind of stuff do you do there? Um, so one of the reasons my family started going was because we had a set of friends. My parents are friends with a family, a couple that have kids my age, and they used to live together, like in the same town, but they both moved away. So it was our. We went to the beach together every year as kids. And then in the 90s, um, they couldn't do the beach, but they were, they were going to their family's house in Chautauqua. Um, so they invited my parents, their parents' house had enough rooms for us to stay and invited us to Chautauqua, um, which was great because it's really expensive there. Um, and um, so we went and we couldn't not go back um, because there's something for everyone. Um, my um, dad really is a sports guy. Um, so he's on the water every day sailing. I grew up on a boat with him all the time. Um, but he also plays tennis. He's really competitive. We have uh, ping pong, um, mini golf. Um, he, I think has done one or two rounds of golf there, but not. he's not a big golfer. Um, but, um, my mom loves the lectures. Um, so she, we would go to morning worship growing up. They have a little 45 minute morning worship Monday through Friday. And then there's a lecture, um, an hour lecture on different subjects each week, um, that you can stay for and listen to. So she would do that. And then she would go to the afternoon lecture, um, and do that. So she had like culture, you know, mental stimulation all day. And us kids were just like let loose. It, it's a gated community where you can bike. Um, so we were just let loose. We, you know, biked around. We did do, they have a kids club and we did do that a couple years, but uh, it, we were split up by ages. So we weren't all together. And some kids are there the whole summer, so we weren't having fun because everybody was friends already with each other, and we weren't seeing the people we wanted to see. So <laughs> they eventually went, "Okay, fine, you can like go take your bike and just oh. get out of here." <laughs> but um, but now I, I love I love the lectures. 
And in the evening, they have like ballet, they have concert. It's, it's culture on steroids for the week. I feel like I go there and I get my culture for the year. <laughs> but, I, I read your information on the, on the bulletins and it went click here for the yeah. uh, events and all the um, speakers and everything. Yeah. And it seemed like there was something every hour almost going on daily. And um, in reality at Chautauqua, you know, on a normal, summer um do you are they are the speak are the speakers free or do you pay to go in or w what is that like uh normally so if you're like someone like uh dan who live you know outside the community you could get pay for a gate pass for a day to go and hear a certain so if you go oh my gosh tom hanks is speaking today i'm going to go you could get a gate pass just for that, but you have to get a gate pass to go in. So my family goes for a week and you buy a gate pass. Um, and they're, I think between, so if you're 12 and under, you're free, um, which was great when we were kids because my parents didn't have to pay for us. Um, and then there's a child's discount from like 25 to 12. So it's like half off or something. And I think seniors get a discounted rate. <laughs> of course. But the, uh, my ticket these days are like $450. Uh, but you're, you get access to everything um, on the grounds. Um, so you get the con evening concerts. You get the speakers. I've heard Hillary Clinton speak. I've heard, um, who else? Um, oh, what's his name? Several senators, um, they're like blanking on me. I can picture them, but. But if, if you're um, staying, if you're renting a, a house in the Chautauqua, um, you, would you, you wouldn't need a pass, would you, if you're. You will need a pass to get on the grounds. Oh, okay. Uh, or, or like, and by, uh, um, and to like go to any of the um, events. So you could like come and like, you know, sit in your house all day, but you wouldn't be allowed in uh, to certain venues. And actually, Bob and Jean Bell, if you guys know them, they are there for the whole season. They actually work there. Jean sings in the choir, and Bob will stand and like take your tickets and like make sure you're legitimate. And one time he kicked my mom out because she didn't have her gate ticket. And I was like, Bob, she's my mom. Can't you give her a break? And he's like, no. <laughs> 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 so um so um I've, I've heard about it for years and years and years and have wanted to go and um had never seen the agenda or the schedule and i was amazed at the amount of uh speakers in one day it's just yeah. and the musicians like i've heard, seen uh joshua bell perform yo-yo ma like these people are like wow like, I, I I can't believe I get this concert, you know, like. Is that in Pennsylvania? Uh, right on the border of Pennsylvania and New York. It's by Erie, Erie. Oh, okay. Uh, Lake Erie. The Aqua Lake. Yeah, yeah. I, I grew up out in the country. So we had about a hundred and some acres out in the country. And um, I did ponds. I went fishing in ponds and stuff like that. We, I didn't do um, the culture of Chautauqua that much, really. Mm -hmm. More Sunday costly. You could go in on Sundays for free and go to the morning worship service. And they have a pastor for the whole week. He does, or he or she does the like big Sunday service and then they do morning worship Monday through Friday. Just curiosity of the people on here. How many of you are familiar with Chautauqua, the Chautauqua circuit and that sort of thing from a history point of view? No, not really. One. <laughs> Just, it was founded 150-ish years ago. Yeah. Um, wow. And it, it started as like a spiritual retreat center for um, pastors and people to like become renewed, but also like senators and you know, government officials that just needed time away to like 
refresh and renew. But then they like took these and started putting them all over the country. Um, so if you know Mount Joy PA, that's a mini Chautauqua. Mm -hmm. uh, so there are all of these little Chautauquas around the country. My family accidentally stumbled on one in Colorado and we were like, oh, <laughs> it's a Chautauqua. Uh, none of them have the uh, amount of quality venues, but they still embody that whole <clears throat> cultural movement of um, challenging your um, mind, uh, you know, bringing in concerts and plays and ballets and things to rejuvenate you. Um, as w And they're usually around a lake or something. So you could probably know. tell I was from there because I'm so highly cultured. <laughs> <laughs> that, was be, that, was a, that was a straight line. That wasn't supposed to be. <laughs> no. Actually, I thought you sounded more Midwest. Yeah, I, I, I live in Chicago. I, I have kind of a Chicago. Oh, okay. you know, when, you're from, when you're in that part of New York, or New York State, you say you're from New York and people have you in the city. And we were, I went to school in Syracuse, for instance, and we're a long way from New York City. We were almost closer to Chicago than we were in New York City. So uh, <clears throat> culturally, certainly. But anyhow, I got off the subject, but I just want to know about that because. Yeah. But yeah, it's a great value this summer. They're doing it all, all their um, events are virtually and it's free for 90 days. And then it's only like $4 after that. So if you wanna start like a Netflix subscription for it, you can, but um, I'm just gonna do the 90 days and watch the whole summer season, which I'm so excited about because like there, I'll be like, this comedian's coming in June, but I'm not going to August. It's not fair. I wanna hear that person <laughs> so this year you can. So anyway, back to tech. <laughs> we got that was I, our that sure. was our culture break yes i could talk, <laughs> talk all the time we'll talk about it sometime okay yeah. um i i do have a question is there uh, anybody knows or you didn't know of uh like a little portable device that um i it can communicate with my tv or with our tvs so I can watch old CDs that I have with pictures uh, or um, uh, DVDs that I have old videos, but we, we dump them all in those things. Is there any device that is small that it, I can put in front of the TV and watch CDs or DVDs? Your DVD player doesn't work anymore or it doesn't plug into your TV? My, my what? DVD player? Yeah, but uh, that is located in a different, you know, it's up high above, it's not portable and everything. So I, I didn't know, I don't know if there's mm -hmm. something that communicates wireless with the TVs. There That's might be a wireless DVD player, um, but my guess is the quality is not going to be great oh. because it will be going through the internet. So be reading that device, I don't think it will. No. Maybe just if there's a way to move your DVD player down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess I could try that. Yes. I, I have the same problem. I have the same problem as you do. I, I've got um, a television in our family room. It's on the wall. There are no yeah. wires on it. There's no plug-in or anything. And this, there's this monster of a kiosk in my basement that has all these blinking <laughs> lights on I have no idea what it's you know what I don't even want to get near it but if I want to play a DVD I would have to hook up something to that monster to play a DVD on my um on my um family room uh, in, in, yeah in the family room <laughs> so yeah I, I can't play any of my DVDs because of this new technology, I, this stupid new technology that we have <laughs> in the house. And um, so that's what I would like to have too, is something that 
I could just put there in the family room and slap a DVD on it and watch a movie. But I'll try uh, to Google and see if there's something available. Um, but um, yeah, you could pro there might be an HDMI port that you could plug in at, to a DVD player, Marty, in the physical TV itself. If you have something that can hold it on that mantle, um, just for like that hour and then <laughs> unplug it and put it out of sight. I would gladly do that if I could do that. You might be able to do that. I'd have to look on the side of the TV, but most have multiple HDMI ports that you could just plug it into. You have a, a what port? An HDMI port? HDMI. Oh, uh, HDMI. Oh, yeah. Okay. I know that. Yeah. Um, 